Okay, so hello everyone, welcome back to another update video, which I think henceforth we will call from the proving ground. Anyway, let's just start off first. I'm sure people, and feel free to comment, ask questions or anything along the way, either about stuff I show off or things going on or that. Feel free to. So, first thing I want to probably just start off with a weird thing. The Super Mario Cereal. So, a store in my local area actually had this. And I think it was about $3 that. So, uh, if you're not, well, it has an Nebo chip inside it. So, I bought one so I could have that. This box is empty. Sadly, the only thing I know that works with is the uh, Mario Odyssey. So... What I have here is the cereal, which I would like to comment is pretty plain. <laughs> uh, though I will give them points that the dry cereal portion does taste like berries. But these marshmallows are really bad. I mean, not to eat, but I mean what they're shaped like. That's supposed to be Mario's hat. Let's see. And... That's supposed to be a question mark block. Whoever made these uh, didn't do a good job on that. <laughs> but I'm sure everyone did not come here to watch cereal reviews. I guess it's the cheapest kind of cereal. Yeah, I think the closest marshmallow to actually looking like what it actually supposed to look like is the one extra life mushroom. I've actually seen a few of those that actually look. Um, overall, are you sure it's edible? Um, it tastes all right. Like I said, I'll give it pointers that the 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 dry cereal portion does taste like berries, like the uh, box advertises. Um, whether that's actually real berries or just all official shit, I don't know. I'm sure it's made of all kinds of all official crap, but um, I've have had raw cereal. This is an interesting thing to think about. Yes, today in Serial Reviews, Super Mario Super Show Serial. Actually, um, long back then, there was actually a Mario and Zelda Serial back then. So that's what was interesting about them making a new Serial. But, uh, uh, I give, I give it a, I think I give it a 5 out of 10. It's pretty average. It's definitely not the worst I've had. But anyway... Moving on, moving on. So, our two lovely Anibo guests, all evil Wakunus Tycoonist Wobbles. So, these I probably really shouldn't bought, but um, Tom Nook and his nephews uh, were b basically cuddling the goodwill in my local area for dollar ninety nine. So I was like, why not? <laughs> I'm I'm a sucker for a deal. I'm a sucker for a deal when something's on sale. I'm a sucker for it. No wonder the clothing industry keeps existing. <laughs> Let's see. So what with actual game things should we start with? Uh, how about something I haven't played before? Now this is the sequel. I don't have the original one. But they had Yoikai Watch 2 at the Goodwill also for $9.99. Sealed copy, no damage to it. Uh, looked like an okay price of that. Sadly, it wasn't anything I could flip. GameStop's apparently only giving six bucks for a copy, so. Because they had three copies, so I was like, hmm, I wonder if this might be flippable on top of buying my own copy. So, wasn't really. But I haven't ever played Yoikai Watch, so I can't really comment much on it. I heard it has been very successful both in Japan and America. And some people have literally called it the Pokemon Killer. So, hope's a little high whenever I get around to trying that. So, let's see. Something that if you watched um, my stream on... Did I do that on Thursday or Friday? I think I did it Thursday night. But uh, I played some of Super Hot VR. I got a physical copy from the overseas piggy waiting. Oh, other, other hand. <laughs> it made a big wave in Japan. Yes, I heard Yoikai Watch was very popular in Japan. 
I heard that it was very popular in Japan, but I heard it did really decent in America too. Uh, Super Hot VR, this is the only physical edition I'm aware of this. It doesn't have any booklet. It has a small insert in it. Don't mind Dead by Daylight hiding in there. It's looking for survivors. Oh, help! I'm in a trap! Um, this is really good. If you got VR, check out Super Hot. I enjoyed that. I'm going to probably definitely do a playthrough of that. Dan uh, recommended that. So I'm glad he recommended that. I'm glad to get a physical edition of that. Let's see. I'm going to save the limited one stuff here. I'm going to cover some of the non-limited one stuff at the moment. Limited one, limited one, limited one. Look at all this limited one. Actually, I'm going to snag this one and put this with it because it kind of has to do with this. So. I got Pascual. Now, this is a game I hold some interesting things about and some really bad things about. I got this for $11 off of Amazon. So, the physical edition is plummeting pretty fast in its value. It has some award markers up here. Uh, White Knight's Best Storytelling, Game Connection, Public's Choice, and GamesCon's Best Indie Game. Now, I know GamesCon. I've never heard of White Knight's and the Game Connection. <laughs> I hope White Knights is not some kind of SJW place. <laughs> um, I've heard some pretty interesting things about Pascal's uh, gameplay. It has psychic abilities. It's supposed to be like the action stealth thrill kind of thing. I don't really know much about the story, but um, some of the gameplay I've seen does look interesting. And I'm always into usually more bizarre games than the mainstream games, especially when it comes to the Western world. So... Um, I have a feeling I might actually really like that versus a lot of people who probably don't. Something I've universally heard panned, however, The Impatient, which is supposed to be a prequel to Until Dawn. See, sorry for messaging you this morning when it was 5 a.m. No, no, that's fine. I was already at, well, 5 a.m. in your time zone. I'm not sure what time zone it was when you messaged me, but I mean, um... I, I always woke up. You're fine. You can message me whenever, man. It's not like some quote a curfew. It's like, you can't tweet me at midnight or you shall be taken to the PewDiePie dungeon and you will heal. Well, we've had jokes for a very long time. No, screw that. You're going to Matt Pat dungeon. <laughs> um... The Impatient is supposed to be a prequel to Until Dawn. I heard a lot of people say it's very panned, uh, very boring, very bland. <coughs> very bland. I've heard it was very, very bland. Um, Kid Icarus, if I never quickly said it, literally doesn't even add anything to the story, to be honest. So, um, I haven't played it yet. It is a VR exclusive game. So, um, if you don't have VR, you can't play the patient, sadly. I got for $15, because I'm still a elite member at uh, GameStop, so um, I got that with this main item, which is what I really wanted to get, because I saw it uh, for $7.99 as elite. The Inner World, The Last Wind Monk, and it also comes apparently with the original game. It says uh, it comes with the uh, original game there, The Inner World. Um... So it's a two two for one deal and eight dollars. It's a point click series. I've I've had this on my uh, list on GOG for a really long time. So it uh, was nice to see this. I always like physical media. I'm not sure how good the PS4 version is. I know sometimes some indie games don't always turn out decent on consoles. Sometimes just look at basically anything Telltale's has ever done. But uh, the graphics and everything look very nice in this, so I look forward to trying that out. Now, the first one, the one thing I'm going to, let's see. Sometimes has good releases. Good to see they're still around. Yes. Um, let's see, what's that other, there's another game they made. It's like a dungeon game that also got a PS4 Release recently, if I remember quickly, also. I think, I, at least I think it was them that made it. I, maybe I'm mistaking them with someone else. But that's something I've been meaning to look into, too. 
So the first limited one thing here is uh, this is related to this fun pack that I got from the Asian market. So limited one did a version of Pixel Gear for their lineup, but that also comes in this full pack fun pack, which has Pixel Gear, Light Tracer, Dying Reborn, and Weeping Doll. Um, this is kind of hard to get your hands on. Um, I I tried to order it from Play Asia on three occasions, and it has um, been canceled all three times because of limited units slash uh, haven't received new units. I got this from a very obscure site that I never heard of, and I took a chance to see if it was trustworthy. It let me pay with PayPal, so I figured the worst case scenario, um, you know, some reason they tried to whip me off I could use PayPal to get my money back but uh, they did send the item so they are kind of an emergency backup source to for overseas things for me if I don't have any luck on some of the usual fronts I do but um, I did do a few of these games too I like light tracer that's a pretty nice puzzle game so I definitely think I'll do some more of that so um, I'm not really sure the update version on the pixel gear in this versus this um, I do know it originally did not have a multiplayer mode, which it does now, so I'm not sure if those are included in that. I'm not sure if I'll really keep this if uh, that's updated itself, so. I don't know, I'm kind of up in the air on that. So, let's see, should we go straight to the limited one? Well, we have a very short amount of non-limited one. A lot, a lot of limited one stuff to go around here, so. Um, let us start with something that always showed off a little bit on stream, the Fallen Legion. Now this has two versions, and I'm not quite sure the significance of the difference, but in the PS4 version you play a princess, while in the Vita version you play a kind of rogue citizen kind. You can see those spikes on the back. And it's, um, if you played, like, Valkyrie Profile's battle system a little bit, it that's probably the closest thing I could compare it to. And I've only tried the PS4 version, so I can't really claim too much about this. Uh, what's really nice about the Vita version is, even though it's very small, it actually has a booklet. It has color, not really too much artwork in it, but it has a little, it actually has a booklet. It's very rare to see. Even Japanese cases are having less... When the Vita first came out, I commented on how I was kind of surprised they were still having booklets, but it's becoming even kind of a way of treat for Japanese versions of Vita games to even have booklets now, which is a shame. Um, I liked it when I played of the PS4 version. I hope the Vita version justifies enough differences of buying it. I hope it's not a very wee skinny, oh, uh, you know, 99% of the content exactly the same with this one percent of slight differences here and now moving on now tumbleweed p uh, p uh, was a park yeah tumbleweed park uh, this if you look up graphics or screenshots of this game you will you should literally get a Lucas Arts um, day of the tentacle slash um, um, what's the other one? What's the what's that other game they also did um, with the Mad Doctor and throwing the jawbone in the into the microwave and microwave and shit? It had an NES version that was heavily censored though. It, it is very reminiscent of that style. It's a point quick kind of affair that it's definitely going for that nostalgic feeling of that. Oh, I'm sorry to hear your connection died. Oop. That be the internet, sadly though. But, um, I, I don't know a whole lot about this game. I haven't personally played it. Oh, actually, you know, that reminds me of something here. But, um, the art style and everything looks good. I've seen a number of screenshots of it. I just haven't played it myself. This was also Limited One's for Switch release. But since they were doing a PS4 version, I didn't really see much point in getting the Switch version. I think it's a tough sale if you're going to have a PS4 version versus a Switch version. 
Because, I mean, for the most part, unless they do a really bad job on the PS4 version, the PS4 version should look better. The only real advantage you'll get with the Switch version is poor ability, where you'll have trophy support and uh, better visuals, and you can directly stream off your system and catch screen... Well, you can screenshot on the Switch, too. Almost, almost tripped over myself there. Now, here's a game I've been looking forward to. This is a Metroidvania style game. This is the second one, I believe. There were three entries. I'm pretty sure this was the second one. The first one's a free game. I'm pretty sure this is the second one. But this is a very Metroidvania style game. It's very beautiful looking. I love the art style in that. I've seen a lot of videos of this game over the years now. I've always wanted to hope one day it got some kind of physical release. So I was happy to see it finally get a physical release. Um, this is available on PC originally, and you can get DRM free or through Steam, whatever particular thing you prefer. So, um, I very look forward to playing that one. This one I've never heard of. Um, it's some kind of side scrolling shooter ship kind of game. Not my kind of thing. I don't usually play too many. This is two player. I don't, I don't mind playing these in two player. I like playing multiplayer stuff so um maybe another time if uh Aaron visits i have a i have a large number of these from limited one and play asia these days from the limited editions but i don't know much about this particular game this game is silly here lethal league limited one did a, another physical version of some weird obscure game so this is supposed to be like some weird kind of one-on-one -on -one thing where you you hit a ball like back and forth between each other trying to like kill each other or some shit. Um, Amelia, I don't know a whole lot, but I, I do remember I've seen some clips and it does have online play up to four players. So actually, apparently, it's it's not just one one, it could be uh, one versus three others. Of that so, um, it's very bizarre art style. That so, this is definitely something I should do a random stream just for fun. Um, it's very like. You can look at the characters there. They're all very, um... I don't know, it kind of has a bizarre Jet Set radio feel to them, in my opinion. And then, uh, if you were here during the stream at the end of my stream yesterday, I did play a little of this, because this was a interesting puzzle game I've been always wanting to try. Kill the bad guy. Kill the bad guy. Kind of reminds me of, um... What, what's that... What's that series that was on Disney... About the orange alien guy with a little hat. Like the villain killer that was sung like the sung this one song is like, I'm the bad guy. It kind of just makes me want to say like, kill the bad guy. In the same way that. But this is a puzzle game where you kind of put on a map with uh, items and stuff. And you can get like multiple different ways to kill the target. Encouraged to find creative ways and collectibles to use. Um, I only played a few of the stages, but I, I would look forward to doing some of that, too. I like puzzle, creative puzzle ideas like that. Lazy Town? No. No, it's not Lazy Town. Not, not Lazy Town. Um, it was about a orange alien with a little green hat. He, like, was very friendly to everyone. It has, like, a evil guy who's trying to take over the universe. And a, another evil person who... Most people presumed was a guy, but they find out it's actually a chick, and she actually wants to destroy the universe instead of taking it over. It's like, I'm not a damsel in this dress. Like, I, I can't remember the whole song. Pixie was obsessed with all when it was running on TV, though. He, like, was really obsessed with all. Though that is a good song. Like, if you look on YouTube for that song for that show, uh, that that's actually a really nice song. It's very catchy. Because I'm the bad guy. <laughs> um, some manga I actually came across at Goodwill. I'm getting really lucky on manga lately. It's been a very dry spell on manga. So I got volume 16 of Yu-Gi-Oh! The Duelist. Which I'm not sure if this is in connection with the original series or not. I think this is supposed to be what the anime is more based on. And then Pokemon Adventures... Uh, gold and silver. Um, the only Pokemon comics I ever read were those 
really old ones that still back when they flipped all the pages and everything. So I got uh, wow somebody somebody was trying to sell that for four dollars. I got them for fifty cents. I didn't even notice that on the back though, but it's not a good will stickle. Maybe that was the place it came from. Hmm. I don't know. It's published by Visa though. So is this um does it say what volume? Volume eleven, it says on the spine. So So I'm not familiar with the manga with most of the Pokemon stuff. Um, the one I was familiar with is one that's notoriously known for actual censorship. Um, it was toned down vastly from how the Japanese version was. It's also notable because uh, James and Jesse got in a, a romantic relationship in that universe. And if I never quickly at the end, they actually get married. So that, that was like the two notorious things that comic that I read when I was a kid back uh, with Pokemon um, I can't remember the subtitle for it though but yeah I remember it was notorious for a lot of censorship changes with Misty a lot of female characters Gary's sister was toned down a lot like I, I guess the artist just um, I guess he was known for other things maybe in that and before I go with the one unboxing thing we got I would like to talk about this so this might be incredibly hard to see because it is the case Let's see there master of the monster layer so that's why I've been playing on my breaks at work and I have finished that though I have unlocked post content I don't think I'm going to pursue that so I will probably be doing a review of that soon uh, kind of an interesting title there's a viewer of mine who's actually uh, playing that for the second time. Yes, it is an Atlas published game in America. It was also published by Rising Star Overseas. So, plus, I don't know. And the Rising Star one's a different name, too. It doesn't have the same name as the American release. I think it's like just called Dungeon Master or something in Europe overseas area. But Rising Stars did a version of it over there. I'm not really sure of any Pacific localization differences between the two. I can tell you the trailer that Rising, Star Rising Stars has on YouTube has a different name for all the three characters than the Atlas version. Whether that gave you an option to change their name or those were names they chose, I don't know. Um, but it is an interesting little title. Uh, I did talk about one other time. Um, basically, you become a dungeon digger of your town, and you dig out a dungeon, and you basically make equivalent of a hotel for monsters. You know, it's like beds to sleep, places to hang out, stuff like that, places to store your goods and that. And then you go and kill them all and wait all this shit. <laughs> it's a giant trap at the same time, but... You're trying to design dungeons to meet different elements, like you'll make a fire floor, ice floor. Um, the final main game's boss room is a very undead place, so you're trying to put a lot of demetic, deme demon demetic things in that floor. Um, it gets very repetitive at the end, but you know that's stuff to talk about when I do a review. But uh, I thought I'd throw that in that I finished that. So uh, right now I'm starting a new game on my breaks and it's called Again. And it was published by Tecmo in America. I don't know about any other Cs. Uh, graphically it does not look like anime at all. It looks like they used um, actual cutouts of actual people with a white border outline. It it's kind of reminds me of you... Think of... What, um, what's that hotel game on the DS game? Um, I'm trying to remember the name. What Was it 215? Hotel, hotel Dusk Room. I can't remember the room number and the name. But um, it, it's, it plays like Hotel Dusk where you have to have the DS sideways like a book. Yeah, Hotel Dusk. I just can't remember the damn numbers for the room. Um, you hold it like a book. And you use the touch screen. It's an investigative game. But it's using actual people. And it's not Asian people. It's looks like American people. So it seems kind of weird that it was published by Tecmo. So I don't even know if it's available in Japan. 
215, was it? Oh, shit. Did I actually get that white? Uh, good memory. <laughs> um, but um, it's uh, so far been a little interesting. Uh, the gimmick, as far as I can tell in the game so far, I'm not super far, is that the main character will go to crime scenes and he'll see two versions on each screen. He'll see a past and the present. So you look around seeing what two different timelines of the area. Yes, I, I need the sequel to Hotel Dusk. Somebody, somebody, please. Can we make a deal, please? I need that sequel to Hotel Dusk. Okay, just say, you know, I got these limited one things, you know. <laughs> um, well, it's Hotel Dusk, but I can't remember the subtitle for the sequel. It's I saw it once at a store at New York, though. They wanted a hundred dollars for it, and I'm like. <laughs> I mean, even the going price then, I think, was only like $60, so I, that was way overpriced. Wasn't there a version for the Wii? Not that I'm aware of. If there is, I'm not aware of it. So anyway, so what is the thing I have to unbox? Why, it's more genie fun with Shante with the Switch version. Uh, I got the Switch version because it has all the content all the DLC content on the cartridge, or at least that's what I've been told by both uh, Xseed and WayForward on Twitter, so I will be very mad if they ended up lying to me. Um, like the original Day One Edition, it does have the uh, Whiskey Beat soundtrack disc that came with the PS4 version. Oh, it was the game with the goal Trace Memory. Trace Memory was, a, if I never correctly, a original launch title for the DS. I tried that out once a long time ago. I didn't really play it much. Last Window, The Secret of Cape West. Oh, that's a bit of a long subtitle, though. But yeah, I need, I need to get um, the sequel to Hotel Dusk. I need to actually beat Hotel Dusk, too. It was interesting. I just... It was one of the things I just like, oh look, here's something else I'm more interested in just kinda of fell in the back. So let's kinda of pop this open now. So this is pretty exciting to get. I like some shante. I'm not into a lot of platformers, but I like shante games. So more shante is good. I need to play the next shante game. That I had. And then I can start this one. Because this one has all kinds of fucking content. This is probably the most content filled Shanta game. See there was a Wii version. Another code. But Japan and Europe. For Trace Memory. Huh. That's interesting. Well considering you had the Wii remote. Act, you could. You could uh, replicate the touch screen. Kind of stuff so. I would imagine it was was probably not super hard to replicate. That's a bit of the shame with uh, the Switch. I kind of feel like there was a lost opportunity with the Wii U to make an add-on that allowed you to play DS shit on your Wii U. Like, I really feel like, because you have one screen now and your television, pop disc in, and you can have the screen on the pad act as the touch screen and your TV act as the top screen. And you could even maybe throw in some bonus modes like where you could flop the screens or something. I really feel like that was a missed opportunity. I really do, I really do, I really do. So, let's see, game that in Whiskey Beats. So, I did get the original PS4 version on sale of this game. So, I always had Whiskey Beats. Now, um, I'm assuming this is exactly the same. It looks the same. Um, I'm not 100% sure I would have to actually check. Obviously, you get the actual game, which uh, comes with the original game that was kickstarted. I did help kickstart that. FYI, just to throw that out there in case anyone um, wants to feel like there's some mysterious conspiracy about that. Um, but, um, you know, for ethical purposes. I did back the original game of this. And it includes all the Pirate's Quest, which, as far as I know, is just mainly wi playing whiskey through the original storyline. Well, they, they repurposed the storyline, but all the fights and everything is just the original game, as far as I understand. 
uh, Friends to End, which is a new story, and then you have the newest ones, the Officer Mode, Ninja Mode, and Beach Mode. And I love how each, everywhere on the back, the cover, and everything where it says beach mode, it says exclusive new bathing suit. It, like, it actually advertises that on the case there or that. So I, I just find that funny. It's like, you you know your audience, Shantae. <laughs> and it comes with, wow, this is a lot thicker than I thought. A pretty decent thick, let's see, let's, let's compare it to the Switch case itself. Pretty thick thick art book there that's pretty do these have page numbers um yes they do 96 pages holy shit let's see looks like a pretty good scale oh is that y tops yeah there there's a good example of some stuff in here y tops i like y tops she's funny she's goofy corky character a lot of nice sketches both uh, cold and just pencil sketches. You know, a lot of environments. Monsters. The giant mermaid that everyone basically lost their mind about. <laughs> this is a pretty nice art book. A lot of those little mini art books that Atlas has all the time are sometimes disappointing. And there's some bathing suit action of the friends. <laughs> Gotta do a video so early. Oh, gotta get those overseas people. They didn't get to hang out in the update last time. Some stuff with the DLC, the officer mode, which is a parody of uh, Mighty Switch Force. I haven't played Mighty Switch Force, so. Let's see, European Special Edition stream. <laughs> well, you all uh, expressed interest to uh, be in it, so. Wanted to make sure you all got the opportunity. Uh, and uh, there's a nice bikini picture of Shante. <laughs> I know, Dan, I know. But you you have more opportunities, more likely, than they do. Also, the art book has um, that kind of... Um, well, it's um, the logo and stuff is standing out just a little bit more. Yeah. It's, or hair and old pant leg. There was a little or hair on that. The logo and all that stands outward from the cover a bit. This is a very nice art book, I have to say. And considering this didn't cost any extra money, as far as I know, this was the basic price just for the launch edition. So, uh, if you're a big Shantae fan, this art book, I'd have to say, is a nice, nice edition. It came from the uh, day one edition for Shantae. So, um, as far as I know, there's no price difference for it. So, uh, if you like Shantae or you like the art, I check it out. It's over 90 pages of artwork, so that's pretty good. Let's see. I went through. Was that something else? No, that was just missing things. Anyway, get that back in there. So, sadly, it'll be a while before I play Half Genie Hero. I still need to beat the uh, Pirates Course one. But uh, I, I have enjoyed Shantae games that I've played so far, so I definitely look forward to trying this. Since this is a complete edition with all the DLC, I'd like to point that out. All the DLC again, so that is a complete edition. Though, uh, I'll probably play the main game on the PS4 since I do have that, so I might as well do that. But all the DLC I'll definitely play on the Switch. Yeah, you probably should, because I, I don't know. The be fair, the PS4 ones did last for a good while. Like I said, I got the PS4 launch edition on sale at GameStop one day. Um, but who knows how many copies of the Switch version they made. They might have made less because there were a bunch of lingering originals for the PS1. Yes, I really love... Same price day one editions that have extra goodies. I think those are always good motivators to go pick up the game early versus uh, pre-order bonuses kind of things. Though, I mean, you could argue it is encouraging pre-ordering because, you know, it's going to be limited to some capacity. So if you don't pre-order, you take a risk at maybe not getting it. 
But still, it's not a pre-order exclusive thing. It's just a limited amount of it. But if it's anything like the PS4 version, there's probably going to be plenty. But like I said, I don't know if they're going to look at that and be like, well, GameStop had a lot of those still and they started selling them cheap, so maybe we should make less. I, I don't know. Either way, it comes... The Switch version comes with an art book that the PS4 version did not come with, and it's very nice. It's over 90 pages of artwork, and it's not pretty skimpy with it. It's pretty, pretty good. There's a lot of background sketches, full color pencil sketches, so I'd say it was pretty good. So I'm actually pretty happy with this. Um, I can't remember if it was Train 999 or Thor 999. I can't remember. Guess what? Your video finally downloaded last night. Oh, yay! Dan can finally do his fancy editing he claims he's going to do. I'll look forward to seeing that. In other news, I am having surgical things going on. If anyone's familiar with a DS Lite, I'm, this DS Lite I got for like $5 thrifting has been having a weird problem where it sometimes will just auto-power on and off itself. So... I'm trying an experiment uh, with the battery. I think maybe the battery's bad, but I'm not really sure. I can't really find anyone with a problem like I, I'm having with it. So, I'm not 100% sure. I have to see what a replacement battery costs. Or, I have to see if it can even... If I plug in a cable, if it'll power on without the battery in there. I'm not sure if it's like that. If it's designed to power on, if I give it a power source, even though there's no battery. Because if I can do that, then I can probably find out whether the battery has anything to do with it or not. But I haven't got around to trying that yet. You scared me. Surgical things. I was worried about you for a second. Fancy editing with a new mic. Well, I, I wouldn't say... Um, the blue ice ball is the greatest thing in the universe, but I mean, uh, it's definitely better than all the headsets I ever seen for consoles. So, um, I mean, it works. That a lot of people will tell you, what is it a uh, blue yeti? I think that's what it's called. A blue yeti is a much better thing a lot of times. Um, it costs a lot more though, so I don't know. Um, I've heard criticism for blue yetis before too. I know it has its detractors out there. The blue yeti does so. That's kind of up in the air on that. So, that's all the new pickups I got. Like I said, I was expecting some more foreign physical copies of VR games, but I haven't gotten that yet. I was hoping to get that yesterday, so hopefully I'll get that this week and I'll be able to show those off next time I get a buildup of stuff. Let's see, it's better than my phone, and I usually used for f <laughs> used your phones. Well, then you and Sega CD Universe will get along quite well, then. He uses his phone very, very often for most of his videos nowadays. <laughs> but, um... Has anyone got any questions or anything about anything? Anything uh, you want to ask of that? I'm, I'm doing, like, a third version of my MatPat counter video thing. I, I just keep not being... I keep feeling like as I go on into the discussion of debunking the Persona 3, uh, uh, the P Persona 4 theory he did, um, I keep getting like mad on mad on, and I'm trying to not make it where I'm sounding like I'm being mad, so I keep getting mad about the video making, being mad. Thousand dollar phone. Well, you just got a twenty five dollar blue, uh, blue snowball, um, I'd call your phone company and ask for a refund then. How long are Shantae games? Um, I'm not sure about Half Genie Hero. That was kickstarted while every other game was developed by them with their own funds. Um, my experience is them not like as short as an indie game, but you're probably looking at maybe 10 hours marks depending on your speed and completionist. Um, because it's like it has a touch of Metroidvania in this. It's not like as detailed as like Symphony of Night, where there's all kinds of secrets everywhere. But if you want to collect all the power ups and everything, you do have to go into the Metroidvania in this of the stages. <laughs> 
Well, I'm just saying, uh, if I got a phone and this mic is shitty for a thousand dollars, I'd be like, I think this needs a fix. <laughs> just saying. Um, but I'm not sure about Half G Hero, but if you're gonna get the Switch version, like I said, it has more DLC. You have the Pilot Queen's Quest, which as far as I know, you just play as, um, um, what's her name again? Crap, um, damn it, I forgot the Pilot Chick's name now. <laughs> um, that's mainly just playing it as whore doing the normal stories, bosses and stuff with slightly changed story. But the Friends Ends, Officer Mode, Ninja Mode, uh, Beach Mode, all supposed to be all new content story things. Let's see. I can't say... Oh, wait. Uh, I gotta go. Sorry. I hope you will post the video later so I can continue to watch. Yes. This video will be posted. Um, I got to... Let's see. Uh, missing what Dan said, though. Uh, I can't say as short as in... Indie game. I've played four hour indie games and I've played 25. Well, I'm saying in my experience, a lot of indie games um, are really usually very short unless they're like very dungeon quality, roguelike type things. Uh, so I'll see you later, Carter. You take it easy. And you play as crap. What a DLC. Crap. I said cop. You talk. Wait, what? Wait. <clears throat> but we are, we are. <clears throat> Queen's Pirate Quest, Friends to the End, Officer Ninja Beach. It's like clean. <laughs> it's like you know. Eh, eh, eh. <clears throat> okay, there you go. We all cleaned out here. Oh, and get this, Dan. I, I was just pointing this out earlier. It does tell you with exclusive beach outfit on the box, so that's hilarious. The the captain. The <laughs> no. I meant like crap. I can't remember her name. Not play as crap. Uh, Dan, Dan, why do you do this to me? Why do you do this to me? But, um, the pirate chick, um, I can't remember her name. It's on the tip of my tongue. <laughs> it's on the tip of my tongue, and the gods get to come out. <laughs> but, I'd probably say I'm most excited to really try this game out, though. I've really, really always hoped that. I think it would have been more appropriate on the Vita. Ironically, though. But either way, I'm I'm perfectly fine with the PS4 version. What was nice is it, it came with stickers. They never did something like that. So, uh, those are very nice. I would probably never use them. <laughs> See, I do it because it's fun. Gotta love the 16-bit beach outfit. Well, it's definitely not 16-bit. I mean, it's a retro... 2D style, but I mean, it's not in bit. I mean, um, at least the Half Genie Hero. The older ones have more of a pixelated spikes. These are very nicely defined spikes. I mean, um, well, not good enough ones on the back, though, that are big enough to see. But um, I will definitely play that one day. I like the Shantae games. They're not super hard platformer games, at least the ones I've played, but uh, I do enjoy them. I do enjoy them. They're not like easy like Corby either, though. But uh, they're definitely not like Cave Story, true ending path, or much more harder platformer style games. But um, the older titles weren't that big in the Metroidvania elements. They just were very minor. So, I kind of hope one of the big things I'd hope for with Half Genie Heroes, since it was a really big, successful Kickstarter game, it's that and Shovel Knight are probably, in my opinion, the two most successful Kickstarter games. But, um, I would hope they expanded a lot more on the Metroidvania feel. I would hope so. That's something I would like to see. That's what I would like to see. 
But uh, besides that, I need to get... There are some reviews that I need to be working on. I got a script for, let's see, Yesterday Origins done. I got Double Dragons done. Um, I actually, while I was at work, because uh, I, I think I only mentioned it once, but something new I've been doing is I've been taking a notebook to work, and while I have nothing to do, I just kind of squibble notes together. And then I'll take time to order all those notes like, okay, I think this should be in the first thing, second thing, third thing. Like, organize it in a coherent order with things that, you know, complement each other. And then I'd rewrite it to where it'd be, you know, a better final draft. So, I got, I got a fucking six-page thing on this game so far. I just need to make sure there's nothing else I really want to comment on about it. But uh, I got a script for Yesterday Origins done, Double Dragons done. I need to work on uh, Thomas Was Alone. And um, I got a few other things I'm laying down that I've played um, to myself for that. But uh, outside of that, not too much more going on. It is Mother's Day today, which is another reason why I'm doing this earlier. Because uh, my mother sleeps a good portion of the morning time. So it'll be a while before she gets up and uh, we go do anything for, for Mother's Day. Uh, we probably will take her out to eat and that uh, unless she doesn't feel good. So uh, that's no reason why this is happening a little earlier than usual. I would probably waited more 11 o'clock-ish in my time. But because it being Mother's Day um, and I think I had a decent amount of stuff to show off. So... Hmm. Do have new air conditioner too. Uh, most people said they cannot hear it during the streams. I don't have it on right now because there's no background music, so I figured it would be easy to hear uh, at this point scenario. Uh, it does a good job, so. But um, oop. Uh, besides that, not much else normal. You know, streaming's been normal. That. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. Make sure you get your limited one Metroidvania games. Just tweet, hashtag tweet uh, limited ones. Be like, I deserve this. But, um, yeah, it's not really much else to really add there. I still got a lot of things to rearrange, but, you know, that's personal stuff. Uh, I really got to get the entertainment stand more arranged. Anyone got any other questions or anything? If not, then that's probably what we're going to finish up on then. Because I'm pretty sure I got everything that was new showed in that. But uh, I'm definitely looking forward to doing Light Tracer, this game, the Metroidvania style game, Kill the Bad Guy. Kill the Bad Guy. I, I don't know. I just look at that and I keep thinking that. Kill the Bad Guy. Had a weird song in the main menu. Rachel says, Thanks. Happy Mother's Day. Rachel's a mother? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Oh, yeah, she takes care of Dan, the biggest baby of them all. <laughs> I'll let my mom know. I don't know if I... I've heard so much negative stuff about the patient, so I'm not really sure if I'd be in a rush to play that. But, yeah. Kill the bad guy, the Metroidvania style game, Light Tracer. I definitely would like to do some more Super Hot, too. That was pretty fun. I'll have to get the original Super Hot game too, since I now know that they have completely different levels and probably some kind of crazy storyline too. So, well, if no one else has any other questions, I say we'll leave it at that then. So, hopefully, everyone had a fun time in. Let's see, she takes care of all. I'm not finishing that. Nope, nope, I'm not finishing that. No. Nice try. Not even doing that. You and the, until I see the sloppy editing job you want to do on that one video, I can't, can't, can't give you any more fuel for your file. <laughs> okay then. Well, we'll go ahead and end it here. Thank you for joining, and uh, hopefully next time I'll be uh, a lot more interesting. I'll have a nice stack of. Unique physical VR games that aren't available in America at the current time. So uh, those should be interesting. And hopefully we can do this more at a more middle-ish time. So we can get a bit of everyone in here. Oh, hey Sega CD Universe. 
Vampire Mike. Hello, how you doing? Taking it easy? Being cool? Sadly, you kind of missed out just showing a lot of the stuff. One of the noteworthy things, I definitely would say the Shante for the Switch. Some manga from the Goodwill. Yori Kai Watch for the 3DS. Super Hot Physical Edition from overseas. Bunch of limited one stuff. That's a quick one down. But this will be this will be up on the main channel, so no worries on that. But sadly, we are toning down the end unless somebody has a question. You got a question? Got a question? Bring out the questions. See, that game is great. I have it on the Wii U. Yes, uh, but the difference between the Wii uh, the Wii U. PS4 versions. I don't think it's on Xbox. I'm pretty sure it's only on Wii U, PS4, and Vita. But the difference between those and the Switch is the Switch has everything on the cartridge. Uh, we will probably take my mother out to go eat. Um, I don't know about anything else besides that. It will probably depend on how she feels. Might Might go a little shopping, maybe. Never played the original game, but VR is amazing. Yes, I did. Like I said, I specifically looked up. It said Super Hot's original game and the VR. Like apparently they were originally putting the main game in VR, but they were finding it like the way they designed the levels didn't transfer into the VR setup. So they basically scrapped that and just made whole new levels for the VR game. Which really makes sense, because as far as I know, you actually can move around a lot in the original game. So I was kind of curious how that was going to work more in the VR. And you don't get to move around a lot. I mean, you, you dodge stuff, but you don't, like, actually uh, uh, walk, walk up shit and stuff. You can, like, lean around and move a little bit, but um, you can't just run around the stages. That's why you warp... If you pay close attention, I start noticing that you're actually warping around a actual stage in different positions. If you look around, you'll you'll find like, hey, there was that place I was just like a a screen or two ago or that. So anyway, so that seems to be it. So sorry for anyone who just popped into that. So next time. I'll have a next time we do a show and tell kind of thing. I'll have a big stack of VR games you can't get physically in America. So hopefully that'll be more interesting. Maybe I'll have some more stuff from thrifting. Let's see, move a little bit. You must be doing it wrong. I got the thousand calorie trophy easy. I don't even know if you have to really do like a thousand calories. It, I doubt it has any real way of keeping track of that. Though I am curious what it actually does to trigger that trophy though. That is a interesting question though. But I'm just saying you dodge. I'm just saying you know, it doesn't encourage you to explore the level. Like you don't have an actual teleporting moving kind of thing. Know what I mean? You don't have like two hallways and you walk down them. Is what I'm saying. Maybe. I don't know. I'm sure it has something to do with your head movement, most likely. Most likely. Anyway, everyone take it easy. Thank you for joining. Praise the sun. I hope those who are going to get the Dark Souls Remastered enjoy it. Because I'm pretty sure that's coming out in, uh, what, about a week more or something around that? Whichever. Meh. But anyway, um, see the red guy is trying to kill you. Don't want you to explore the level. Well, you warp around, so what are you supposed to do? <sighs> anyway, the 25th. 25th, so yeah, it's coming out pretty soon. So hopefully those uh, who are looking for the Dark Souls 1 will definitely enjoy that. Um, I actually saw some... Before we go, though, I actually did saw some of uh, the beta test server stuff. Some of the dev people were invading people. Somebody got invaded by the PR guy of FromSoft. It's funny. See, you can't praise the sun if you don't get the newest game. It's not the newest game, though. It's just a newer port of the game. 
So I disagree. But anyway. I mean, I'm sure I'll get it down the world, just probably not full price. I just wish it was done more like Skull of the Four Sin, where they rearranged a lot of the enemy placement. I'm really like on that boat with Vaddy about, uh, I would have liked it mixed up. Because to me, the unknown factor is the experience of Dark Souls. And even though they couldn't do much to remix the bosses in Skull of the Four Sin, the stages were very different. It hasn't been released yet, so it's newest. Bah, humbug. I disagree. No, I mean for its full price. Anyway. Anyway, anyway, anyway. Thank you for joining, and I'll see you next time. Peace out.